This is part two of the Android slide out menu tutorial. In the first part, I showed how you can implement a menu which simply pops in on the left hand side of the screen, uh, but there was no animation involved. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can implement animation to the opening and closing of that menu. So I have open here our example application. Uh, this time when I click on the toggle menu button, you'll notice that the content is animated as it slides over to the right, revealing the menu beneath. And when I click on one of the buttons in the menu, the content slides over to the left, closing the menu. So let's take a look at the source code and see what changes we needed to implement this animation. The first change occurs in the enum menu state. Originally, this had only two possible values, closed and opened. I've added two additional values, closing and opening, as the menu can now be in the process of either closing or opening as the content slides to the left or right, respectively. There are also three objects that I've added to this class to facilitate the animation. The first is a scroller, uh, and a scroller's job is to keep track of the position of uh, a view in the UI while it's being animated. And a scroller takes two attributes, or two parameters, pardon me. The first is a context, and the second is an interpolator. Uh, and the interpolator is used to determine the speed of the animation at a given point in the animation's duration. Uh, the second is a runnable, uh, and the runnable's job is to dispatch the updating of the UI to reflect the content's new position as it's being animated. And the third is a handler whose job it is to execute that runnable to update the UI. There are also two constants that I've added. Uh, the first one is menu animation duration, which is set to 1000. This means it will take 1000 milliseconds or one second for the menu animation to complete. Uh, the second is menu animation polling interval, which I've set to 16. This means that every 16 milliseconds, the UI, uh, an update on the UI will be called to reflect the new position of the menu while it's animating. So if we update the UI every 16 seconds, that reflects to approximately 60 frames a second that the animation is being updated. The logic for powering the animation begins in the toggle menu method. In the previous example, the toggle menu method simply moved the content immediately to the right to open the menu or to the left to close the menu. Uh, there was no animation involved. Uh, now the job of toggle menu, rather than to move the content itself, is to begin the animation that will translate the content to its new position. So we still have two cases, closed and open, and a third case for default where the menu is either in the process of opening or closing. Uh, in the event that the menu is currently closed, we set the menu's new state to opening. Uh, we immediately set the menu's visibility to be visible. Uh, as you'll recall, when the menu is closed, we set its visibility to be gone. So we need to make sure that the menu is visible so as the content slides out of the way, it's actually revealing something underneath. Uh, and then next, rather than transition the content uh, in the toggle menu method, uh, we call the menu animation scroller and begin the scrolling. Uh, this is done by calling the start scroll method, which takes in five parameters. The first two parameters are integers, which reflect the view that we're translating reflects its current position. So we assume that the content is currently in an initial position of 0, 0. Uh, next are two integers which reflect the amount that we want to move this, you, this uh, view to the right or horizontally and vertically. So we want to move the content to the right by the size of the menu, which we can get by calling get menu width. And since the content never gets translated vertically, we set the y value to be zero. So this will only scroll the content horizontally. The final parameter uh, is a, a value reflecting how long we want this animation to take. Uh, we want it to take 1000 milliseconds, and that's the constant we've specified, menu animation duration. Uh, in the event that the menu's open, we set the menu's current state to be closing. Now, we don't set the menu's visibility to be gone immediately, and this is because uh, we're starting the animation to close the menu, so the menu will still be visible until the content has shifted all the way to the left to cover it again. So we don't actually change the visibility of the menu here, we'll set the menu to be gone once the animation is complete. And again, we call start scroll on our menu animation scroller, but we pass in a different set of values this time. Uh, the initial position of our content is no longer 0, 0. Uh, in fact, the horizontal offset of our content is reflected by the value stored in current content offset. So we pass that in as the initial x position. And again, we know that the content never moves vertically, so we know that its y position is still 0. Now, 
This time we want to move the content to the left by the amount that is currently offset, so it returns to its initial position at zero. To do that, we pass in the negative value of current content offset, and again we pass in zero for the Y uh, vertical transition. And again, we want this animation to take 1000 milliseconds, so we pass in menu animation duration again. Now, additionally, we have this default case in the switch case. Uh, in the event that the menu is currently in the state of opening or closing, we'll just ignore this call to toggle menu altogether and simply return from the method. Uh, we will wait for the animation to be totally complete before we begin listening to request to toggle the menu again. Now, the final thing that we do in toggle menu is call uh, on the menu animation handler post delayed, and this takes in two attributes. Uh, two parameters, pardon me. The first parameter is our menu animation runnable, which is responsible, for, as you'll see in a second, for checking what the new offset of the, uh, of the content should be and calling an update on it accordingly. And the second is how soon this should be executed. So we want this update to be executed 16 milliseconds from now, uh, which we've reflected uh, in our constant menu animation polling interval. Now, originally in toggle menu at the end of this method, we called invalidate to force a refresh of the UI. Uh, we won't do that this time because now that toggle menu is complete, uh, we haven't actually done any translation on the content itself. Uh, the job of the menu animation scroller is to only track what the offset of the content should be, uh, but we haven't actually moved the content yet. As you'll notice, we haven't called offset left and right anywhere in toggle menu method. So we know that this method hasn't done anything to change the, uh, to change the look of the UI. So we don't need to call invalidate yet. Uh, we do call it later, however, and you'll see that in a second. This is animation runnable, uh, whose run method is called every 16 milliseconds by the handler while the animation is ongoing. Uh, so what it does is it gets a reference to the menu animation scroller in its parent flyout container, and it calls the method compute scroll offset. Now what this does is at the moment that this method is called, it determines what the position of the view it's tracking should be uh, at that point during the animation. So. We, our animation takes 1000 milliseconds. Uh, if this method compute scroll offset is called 300 milliseconds into the animation, it will compute what the position of the content should be 30% of the way through the animation. And when this method is called, it returns a Boolean value. Uh, that Boolean value is true if the animation is not yet complete, meaning that it still has some ways to scroll, or false if the scroll is complete, meaning that the animation is complete. And I'm storing that value in a variable here called isAnimationOngoing. Uh, then, again, again, get the reference to the parent flyout container and call a method called adjustContentPosition, which takes in one parameter, which is a Boolean value indicating whether or not the animation is ongoing. Uh, really, I could consolidate this into a single line of code, but I've split it into two just so it's obvious uh, what's happening here. First, we're calling uh, the scroller to compute what the current offset is, and then passing the result of that method to adjustContentPosition. So let's take a look at what a just content position is actually doing. Uh, again, it takes one parameter, uh, which is a true or false value, true if the animation is ongoing and false otherwise. So the first thing I do is get a reference to the animation scroller and get its current X, which means its current horizontal position. Uh, and this current horizontal position was calculated when the compute offset was called in the runnable. So I get its current X position and store it in a variable called scroller offset. Now here's where we actually translate the content uh, the, to the left or to the right. So I call content offset left or right. Now what scroller offset contains is what its current offset should be. So if, for example, um, we're halfway through the animation and the content has to move to the right by 400 pixels, uh, scroller offset would contain the value 200 uh, using our linear interpolator because halfway through the animation it should be halfway to its open position. Uh, but if we pass in the value 200 to offset left or right, what that will do is move the content 200 pixels to the right and we don't want that. So what we want to do is calculate how far the content or the scroller has traveled 
since the last time we updated the UI. So to do that, I take the current value of scroller offset, which is the current position that the view should be, and subtract it from the position the content was last time this method was called, which is tracked in current content offset. So for example, if previously the content was move, was at position 190, and the scroller now says it should be at position 200, uh, it's going to offset the content to the right by 10, because it will subtract 200 minus 190, and that's 10. Next, we set the current content offset to be equal to the scroller offset, because that's the position it is now. And this is where we call and validate, because now that we've called content offset left and right, uh, we know that the UI has changed, so we need the view to be redrawn. Now, we have uh, a conditional statement down here on the value is animation ongoing. Uh, if the animation is ongoing, meaning that the content still has a ways to move before the menu is totally opened or closed, we again call the animation handler post delayed and pass in the runnable and the polling interval. So this will execute another update of the UI uh, 16 milliseconds from the time this method completes. Uh, otherwise, if is animation ongoing is false, then that means that our menu is now either totally opened or totally closed. Uh, so we need to do some cleanup once the animation is complete to set the menu state and do a few other things. And that is all handled in a method called on menu transition complete. So let's take a look at that method. So again, uh, what we do in this method depends on whether the menu is currently opening or closing. Uh, in the event that the menu is opening, all we need to do once the menu is complete is set its current state to open. Uh, that's all that needs to be done. But if the menu is closing, uh, in addition to setting its current state to close, we now have to set the menu visibility to be gone. So that way, uh, since it's totally covered by the menu, uh, all versions of Android will not try to draw the menu since it's been totally covered. And again, in the event that the menu is currently not in the state of opening or closing and this method somehow gets called, uh, it just will not do anything. So uh, that's all the code it takes to power this animation, which again looks a little something like this. Now, you may be thinking, looking at this animation, well, it doesn't look all that natural. Uh, it's, it's a little mechanical, it's very boring, doesn't really look all that nice, uh, which is true. And Cyril Motier points this out in his blog post that, you know, hey, a, a normal linear transition is going to look really bad. It's going to look really robotic and not be pleasing to the eye. Uh, but there is a way you can change that. So if you recall at the top, when we declared the menu animation scroller, it took two parameters. Uh, the first is a context, fairly straightforward, uh, but the second is an interpolator. And the value that we passed in here was a linear interpolator, which is a default interpolator provided by Android. Uh, the job of an interpolator is to determine uh, the speed of the animation at any given point during its duration. And a linear interpolator uh, basically is exactly what it sounds. It's a linear speed, a constant speed throughout the duration of the animation. Uh, and that also means that at any given point during the animation, it's very predictable uh, what offset the view will be at. So for example, a third of the way through the animation, uh, the view will be a third of the way to its end position. Halfway through, it'll be halfway to its end position. Uh, and that's what makes it look very robotic. Uh, and we can change the appearance of the animation by changing the interpolator that we use here. So you may have noticed that when I was showing off the runnable down at the bottom, um, I've declared another instance of interpolator, which I've called smooth interpolator. Uh, and this is taken from uh, Ciro Mochier's blog post. And he describes this equation, uh, this one right here, as one that's relatively pleasing to the eye when the menu opens and closes. So if I go back up to the top here, I'm going to do some live editing of the code, and I change this linear interpolator implementation to a smooth interpolator implementation. Let's take a look at what this looks like. So again, here's the sample application, but now when I click on toggle menu, you can see that the animation looks different. Uh, the speed at which the content is sliding out of the way at any given point during the animation uh, is quite different. And this rate of animation looks a lot more pleasing to the eye uh, than the linear animation that was originally implemented. Here's a comparison of the linear transition and the smooth transition side by side. The linear transitions on the left and the smooth transitions on the right. And this really highlights just how much better the smooth transition really looks.
you can see just how simple these implementations of interpolator are. Um, all they do is have one method called get interpolation, and that takes a decimal value that is between 0 and 1, which reflects the percentage of the animation that's complete. And its job is to return another decimal value, which reflects how far between the initial position and the offset the content should be at that given percentage. Now, you can actually return values that are outside of the range of, of 0 to 1, and what that will do is cause the content to overshoot uh, the bounds that you specify in your scroller. Uh, and there are occasions where you may want to do that to make an animation that sort of bounces back once it reaches uh, a certain threshold. Uh, and you can experiment with various other equations, just plug them into an interpolator like this. Uh, it's incredibly easy to do. Uh, if you have a graphing calculator, just punch in a couple different equations and you can see the curve at how the uh, animation will change over time. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next example, I'm going to be implementing a few more of the UI uh, suggestions that Cyril mentions in his blog post. So thank you once again for watching and stay tuned for the next video.